You are Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oklahoma State doesn't make a move like this unless they think they can be a wrestling dynasty just like Penn State. This is a Locked On crossover featuring Locked On Nittany Lions and Locked On Oklahoma State. I'm one of the co-hosts today, Zach Seiko, and joined by Cody Stovall of Locked On Oklahoma State, Locked On Pokes. Cody, I mean, this we in our this this is a historic move for Oklahoma State to now kind of shift the paradigm, maybe over college wrestling, and it's also historic because this I think is the first wrestling. Locked on crossover ever. So we we got plenty to cover, but I think the first thing, the first big thing we should start with is the dynasty. Is this a threat to the dynasty, right? You're taking somebody that's been a part of that Penn State culture for a decade plus, and now you're dropping him in a culture that is already enamored with wrestling. There's history behind it, but but it's different. So what's the sense right now? In Stillwater, with this kind of move that David Taylor, an outsider, is coming in. I mean, how how did it all come about? How do you feel about it? How does Poke Nation feel about it? Well, hey, man, thank you very, very much for having me. I greatly appreciate yeah. it. And uh, I'll tell you this. It's equal parts extremely exciting, but also slightly perplexing. Because you're right, this is an outside hire. And mm-hmm. Oklahoma State uh, traditionally doesn't really take gambles uh, when it comes to specific sports. This is one of those sports that we don't really typically do a lot of gambling. And we we'd seemingly thought we were pretty set up already, right, with, with John Smith moving on. But I'll tell you this. Everyone is excited because you're talking about the old guard, the original, you know, the, the original dynasty founder of what wrestling mm-hmm. should be collegiately. And yeah. now you're talking about the new heavy hitter, which is Penn State. Ever since, what, 2011, Penn State's pretty much owned wrestling. And I'll tell you, as an Oklahoma State fan, even if you weren't ever really into wrestling, the fact that there was somebody else out there that was as good as we were has been very frustrating. And then over the years, Mm -hmm. the gap has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Right from 2011 to like 2016-ish, it was Penn State finished first and we finished second every single year. Mm -hmm. And then, right, and then we got third and then we got fourth and then we got seventh. And we've just gotten further and further away from what the expectation is. The expectation in Stillwater is to compete for national titles. Not third place, not fourth place, not fifth place. So getting back to where Oklahoma State belongs, yeah, everyone's extremely excited. And there's no doubting that Kale Sanderson's obviously one of the greatest wrestlers, if not the greatest wrestler in the history of the collegiate game. What he's done at Penn State is remarkable. Um, And you know what? We, in Big 12 country, we've always been sad that he's at Penn State. We've always wanted him back at Iowa State, if we're being 100% real with you. (laughs) So, you know, we're we're excited. Uh, I know that Oklahoma State was very heavily involved with at least trying to get uh, Casey Cunningham, but he said said no. So um, we, we, we took another swing, and that leads us to believe that we know what Cale Sanderson is doing up in State College is the new way of wrestling. The old school John Smith way of wrestling, it it worked forever in a day. But now Mm -hmm. it's about scoring points. Now it's about being much more versatile. And um, David Taylor brings that. So we're excited because it it should put us back where we belong, which is right there with Penn State. But it is slightly perplexing. I I think from uh, deja vu, right? I, I, Cody, if you look at what had happened before, right? Kale Sanderson was he left his alma mater, left his alma mater to build a dynasty up at Penn State. So he went yep. from Big 12 country with the Cyclones to Penn State and kind of the same thing. David Taylor, Penn State, State College, Central Pennsylvania. You drop him in now in Big 12 country. So it's all, you know an inverse of what had happened a you know decades ago with Kale Sanderson ultimately taking over and turning Penn State into what it is now and I guess that's the idea here is that David Taylor is a young wrestling coach like Kale Sanderson once was one of the best to ever do it collegiately international nationally internationally and now you put him in Oklahoma State so they're trying to you know copy what you said like the, this formula that that's been working in modern collegiate wrestling so I, I think that Oklahoma State can have – they I think they have to be patient, though. I think they have to be patient. If you're expecting Oklahoma State to be, you know, you know point for point, 
pound for pound when they finally get to NCAAs and right there with Penn State and they're going to split a lot of things. That's not going to happen in one, two, three years time. I think you see the turn in five, six years time. And if you don't, that's when you say, okay, did this move ultimately make sense? Hindsight's always 2020. But if we're looking at this right now, I want people to understand that this has to be at a minimum a five-year plan if you're going to try to knock off Penn State's dynasty. But what what is Oklahoma State's you know idea behind this? Uh, we've waited long long enough. Five years is far too long. We understand mm -hmm. that there's going to be some, you know, there's going to be some different directions, right? We're still not even sure what exactly the coaching staff is going to look like. Thus far, the individuals obviously are extremely excited. So are the the young wrestlers across the country, which is going to do a, a lot for mm -hmm. for you know what we're trying to accomplish, but. A couple years, of course, we're not going to catch Penn State, but by year three, uh, I think we fully expect to be competing for a national title. I mean, realistically, we we expect it every year. This this finishing yeah. seventh and eighth stuff, it's it's been so internally maddening. So yeah, anything anything less than top three, top four is not acceptable. And that's and that's just it. You don't make a move like this unless you think you can. I, again, they were going after Casey Cunningham. So the idea was, you know, hey, if you can't beat them, join them in a case, in this case. But they're not they're not merging. They're taking a piece of Penn State away and, and dropping it at Oklahoma State. Again, I, I like the move for collegiate wrestling. I don't like it for yeah. Penn State because you're taking somebody. Yes, that was essentially just by having his presence in Central Pennsylvania was recruiting. Maybe I. He's obviously not actively recruiting with the coaching staff, going out and doing you know visits and everything. He ha you know has the wrestling center, the athletic center, M two formerly right, a and then was competing with the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. And now you're taking that out of Penn State and you're putting that in Oklahoma State. So that's going to affect both programs from the sense of collegiate and, and what they do internationally. Olympically, right? We've seen how well the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club has done. I think the only representative from Oklahoma State was Dayton Fix uh, at, at the Olympic trials there. Yeah, like I said, we're not we're not performing at the level now. This did kind of catch people off, off guard. John Smith retiring even caught people off guard uh, because yeah. after having you know back to back worst seasons in Oklahoma State history, he did rebound this season. And at one point in time, I think we were 18 and 0 uh, coming into you know the last duel of the season. Things were going really well at, at one point in time. We had another you know top five recruiting class, which is paramount for the success of Oklahoma yes. State. Um, so again, nobody really expected John to retire this year. Uh, we all assumed he would do one more year uh, because you know he showed glimpses of what Oklahoma State wrestling could be this previous season. Had a good class. It has a good class right now. Um, and then, you know, we've even had some some guys continue to commit or uh, verify that they're still coming to Oklahoma State even after John Smith left, which led us to believe that we already had our coach in place. So, yeah, I mean, this is um, – it's a very, very surprising move. But it's it, – like you said, it's big for college wrestling. I will say this, right? Historically, the Oklahoma State-Iowa match has kind of been one of the biggest ever in wrestling. Mm -hmm. This hire right here – I think almost instantly shifts Oklahoma State Penn State rivalry to a completely different level. And that's nothing against Dan Gable, right? He's he's a mm -hmm. phenomenal dude, and I was awesome. But this changes the the landscape of not only college wrestling but definitely recruiting. Just as much as everybody in the country know it's an honor to you know coach to coach be coached by Kale. Mm -hmm. David Taylor's one of the most popular wrestlers. In um in the world, for yeah. young for young cats, so recruiting is is gonna yeah it's gonna be fun, man. As you can see that again on the collegiate stage, the national stage, the international stage, I think that's a very very good point. Is that he is popular with younger wrestlers and would have no issues recruiting. You know, the transfer portal just closed, but let's get back into that. So coming up after the break, we're gonna discuss how David Taylor's plan for success will look like in Stillwater. That's coming up next. Today's crossover episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. It's what wins championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. 
eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to its peak performance from superchargers to roof racks to exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you are into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car into that MVP and bring home huge victories. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. That's ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. All right. Game off. We got to talk more about Monopoly Go. And I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You've already talked about that before, but there's just so much good stuff to tell you about in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with your friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get. Unique stickers that you can trade with friends to complete albums for bigger prizes. Cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with and hilarious emojis when you want to taunt your friends after you smash their buildings and heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting each and every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. That's Monopoly Go. Game on. So David Taylor is going to have an embarrassment of riches to begin his time at Oklahoma State. This isn't a rebuild. This is a reload in a sense. I, I see the reports that he's going to, you know, Oklahoma State's cleaning house. They're going to get it. everybody, every one of his coaches is going to be, you know, David Taylor's choice. And then he's going to have the facilities, the resources. He got a very handsome salary. And I hear something about, you know, the ho the housing is going to be nice as well. So the, the setup for David Taylor, he's going to live comfortably and he's going to be able to coach comfortably as well. But the, but the blueprint here, since the transfer portal did close, David Taylor can't exactly bring any Penn State or just anybody he's connected to wrestlers through the transfer portal, maybe Terrell Bearclaw. But again, Oklahoma State's lineup is, is loaded for next season. They are, they are set up very well. They already had some incoming transfers. They're going to have a stacked lineup. And the idea is, okay, let's take what you can and compete with this. But ultimately, Cody, what do you see as far as the blueprint for him to work in Stillwater? I expect him to live up to the his nickname, right? Because there's not going to be any shortage of talent in Stiller, Oklahoma, already on the roster. Recruiting mm -hmm. for the last couple of years, well, actually, never. We've never had a massive issue in recruiting for wrestling. What we did have was the fact that we were becoming people's second or third choices, right? People wanted Penn State first. They wanted Iowa mm -hmm. first. That That's something new that we haven't had to deal with for a long time because – Historically, Oklahoma State was usually everybody's first choice until Kale Sanderson got Penn State going. We really only had to compete with Iowa and then occasionally teams like Minnesota, Iowa State occasionally. But, you know, Penn State's kind of changed the game for us. Yeah. The plan is, is just live up to the nickname. We're not going to have quite the talent that Penn State has. We're not. But we're not going to have, you know, talent that isn't instantaneously top five good. We proved this season – you know, most of the season we were ranked number two or three in the country. We just we, we had a couple injuries and it, things got wonky the last couple weeks of the season. But before that, I mean, it looked like this was going to be another team that couldn't compete for a national title, but could easily compete for a top three spot. The wheels kind of fell off. And I think some of that is just, you know, the grind throughout the course of the season and not having a, a good game plan for how to score bo bonus points. We're not a bonus point team. We never have been. Mm. But that's 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 changed now because of Kale Sanderson, yeah. because of Penn State. Um, so we have the talent. If, mm -hmm. if you combine the tenacity that I think Taylor is going to bring, and the ability to to I don't know make crazy moves in the waning seconds of matches, 
that's uh, that, to me, that's a successful blueprint. Let's address this. I don't. I don't think David Taylor is going to bring any current or or even future Penn State wrestlers, guys that are committed to Penn State over the course of 2024, 2025. You might may be able to get a transfer or two in next year's cycle because Penn State Penn State's wrestling room is pretty crowded. It, it's pretty loaded, and and at some point, eventually, someone is going to have to transfer out. But then it, that's a that's ultimately has to do with relationships. I can't sit here and say. Oh, David Taylor was best friends with this wrestler as opposed to this wrestler, right? It, it, it's tough to say which wrestlers are the most impacted. Levi Haynes is one, but the transfer portal is closed. They can't get anybody immediately that is currently there that is wrestling that's a sophomore, junior, senior that can make a switch for one to two years. And, and I think the commits are committed to Kale Sanderson, Cody Sanderson, right? Casey Cunningham. David Taylor was in the mat room. He's in the wrestling room. He wasn't an active coach. So, you know, kind of by proxy, it, it benefited one another. So take that into account. Where I'm concerned is taking wrestlers out of the other other player, other other players, other wrestlers like David Taylor with him to Stillwater. So the rumor is Kyle Dake, right? Would Jason Nolf consider something like this? Thomas Gilman, all these guys that have been on the Olympic circuit, the international circuit, and have done very, very well. That's when it's like, okay, David Taylor's just one, but then you add another, and then you add another, and then you add another. And David Taylor's very popular among young wrestlers that are coming up through the college ranks. So is Kyle Dake. So an all-star staff like that would certainly be a home run for Oklahoma State if David Taylor can't ultimately put it together. Yeah, it's it's amazing just the pull that he already has because of the name that he carries. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll be honest with you. Coleman Scott is hanging out and Coleman Scott was, you know, an individual who was an assistant in North Carolina. He was also a national champion at Oklahoma state, four time, all American, won a bronze medal in the, in the, in the Olympics. So not quite the anywhere near quite what David Taylor was able to do, but he's still an extremely mm -hmm. accomplished wrestler. And he's a cowboy that took over North Carolina after being an assistant there. Uh, he was a, an assistant for one of North Carolina's, I think, their only five-time All-American they've ever had in school history, a unanimous mm -hmm. uh, All-American and national champion last year. So for him to leave a very lucrative and well-paying job as the head coach at North Carolina to come be an assistant for John Smith last season. That's crazy. <laughs> most of us thought that, okay, this is the yes. writing on the wall. Obviously, yes. Coleman Scott's going to take over for John Smith. So when John Smith retired, we all thought, well, okay, it's a year earlier than we anticipated, but it's fine because we have Coleman Scott. And then you mentioned some of the transfers were coming in. They, the transfers that came in knew that John Smith wasn't going to be the guy even before mm -hmm. he announced it. So all the, they were all very happy with Coleman Scott. And now you're hearing some of the, the all-star cast that David Taylor could potentially bring in. And right. I'll tell you, as Oklahoma State fans, we are all wondering the same thing. Well, where does this put Coleman Scott? Because he's a cowboy. Yes. And he's, he's very, very, very decorated and has phenomenal relationships and was part of this, this last recruiting class. And he was part of this last season that led us to a beginning of an 18-0 run. So yes. regardless of who he can and cannot pick up, I think he would be remiss to not try to get Coleman Scott to stay and be a part of whatever he has cooking. Now, Coleman Scott may not be super pleased because right. I'm sure there's at least a small part of him that assumed the same thing that the other you know millions of Cowboy fans thought, that this is going to be Coleman Scott's job. But, of and, course, and I, I, I do love Chad Weiberg's comments, mm -hmm. right? Oklahoma State Wrestling – is top notch so we are going yeah. to go top notch fishing it's one of the few sports where we can do that right football yeah. we could never go get a nick saban but yeah. in wrestling we do carry enough weight that that's a possibility so i don't know it's, it's a it's a bold move chad weiberg but it it should pan out well and that's just it and and something that i've been interested in because the only drawback or the criticisms that I've immediately seen from people, whether they're Oklahoma State faithful or just wrestling fans and spectators in general, is that David Taylor doesn't fit in. Scott, that's where he had the advantage, is that culturally, he understands. He understands the power dynamics. He understands the history of it. I'm not saying that David Taylor can't learn it, can't adapt, can't adjust, 
but Scott has all of that. And what if David Taylor never amounts to fitting in to Stillwater? If it seems to be this niche area that that everyone's making out that it, making it out to be with the criticisms. I mean, does uh, Oklahoma again? Oklahoma State doesn't make this move if they don't believe in it. But why do they go away from someone who you know eats, sleeps, breathes blood, sweat, and tears into the Oklahoma State program in Scott? When they can go, uh, when they go with an outsider like David Taylor, why? What is it about David Taylor that says yes, he can fit in Oklahoma State culture? Well, I think that's the difference between waiting five years and wanting to win immediately. If you if you want to wait five years, you just roll with Coleman Scott, right? He's gonna oh, continue. Okay. He's gonna continue recruiting successfully. Oklahoma State's never gonna have an issue not getting top five, top ten classes in 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 recruiting, right? For wrestling, right. And, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time, yada, yada, yada. So if if you're cool with five years, then you already have your guy. To me, this clearly indicates we don't want to wait five years. This is this is the guy that we think can bring in the, the recruiting classes to help us win now and to get enough mm-hmm. bonus points to help us win now. I think that's the biggest difference between waiting and not waiting. And I do know that the donors had a heavy hand in this. We have a couple donors mm. that basically, you know, said, hey, we're all happy with Coleman Scott. Everybody that's ever cheered orange and black, we all love Coleman. But we're, we're willing to throw some money at you trying to, to hit a couple home runs. Swing for the fences. Why not? We are Oklahoma State. People will answer the phone. And that's what we did. And this is the result. After the break, we'll wrap it up on what's a historic crossover episode in the Locked On Podcast Network since we are talking wrestling here. Realistic expectations, ultimately. Is the dynasty at Penn State finished? Is there going to be a, 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 is there going to be a split in power here? A split in championships? Does David Taylor even finish at Oklahoma State? Finish his coaching career? Is he a lifer? We'll discuss that on the other side of this break. And another sponsor on today's episode is Yahoo Finance. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. You've saved, you've researched, you've invested all that you can. Now you need to take those investments to the next level by using what every financial great uses, Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for a little bit of extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They are the number one financial destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. With a community of over 90 million, that's right, 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. Once again, that's yahoofinance.com. And in this final segment, let's address some of the questions, the ideas posed from the previous one. Cody, uh, I I look at this and I say, based on where David Taylor's been in State College, it sounded like he was 50-50 all the way through and they had to renegotiate and renegotiate that he originally told them no, and then it's like a like a tentative no, but and then what if? And then what if and then what if? And then they finally came to that agreement. So I, when when I look at that, I, I, it leads me to believe that I don't think David Taylor's a lifer at Oklahoma State. I I'm curious to see if this ha- you know if this doesn't work out, he's gone in five years, right? There, I, I feel like Oklahoma State's not going to be reactionary again. They were proactive with this move. I think they would be proactive to let him go if, especially, it's not they're not consistently in the top three because he is an outsider, right? But Kale Sanderson had time. And Penn State allowed him to work and work and work and look what it's turned into. So maybe I'm wrong about five years, but I feel like, again, Oklahoma State is going to be proactive with whatever types of moves, especially if the results aren't there right away. But Cale Sanderson at some point is going to retire. What if David Taylor's interested and probably called upon to take over the Penn State program? So that's a 20, 30, right? Well, how long does Cale Sanderson want to do this? So I'm really projecting far out. But at the end of the day, I don't see David Taylor 
completing, starting and finishing his coaching career in Stillwater. Yeah, I don't either. And that's that's obviously one of the biggest risks to this kind of move is mm-hmm. whenever Kale Sanderson decides to hang it up. And you never know. Kale could at some point in time want to return home before he retires to Iowa State. I, I don't I don't see that happening, obviously. Mm-hmm. I think if he was going to make that move, he'd have done it a while ago. But nonetheless, yes. right, as, as a Penn State fan, there's always that possibility that if Kale Sanderson were to ever leave for anything, it would probably only be something Iowa State related, right? And it would be yes. the same thing. Whenever Kale Sanderson decides he's done, wants to hang it up, that David Taylor is going to be the natural first choice for Penn State country. And I know some Penn State fans and some current Penn State wrestlers are not super pumped at the very moment, but four, five, six years from now, the animosity is going to die down and David Taylor is going to continue to be one of the greatest Penn State wrestlers of all time, right? Mm -hmm. So I I, I agree with you. The the downside to this move over Coleman Scott is Coleman Scott would, much like John Smith, he would stay here for 35 years, all day, every Mm -hmm. day. This is a temporary move, most likely. But again, this is the pros and cons. We know that this has been weighed. It's been weighed that he's probably not a lifer in Stillwater. But again, to me, that's the emphasis on, well, we got to win now. We have to revitalize Oklahoma State wrestling because we are getting further and further away. Mm -hmm. The teams that were competing against Penn State for national titles but losing for four, five, six years in a row – those teams are now getting seventh, eighth in the in the national champions. We can't we can't do that. And and it will be interesting what ultimately is the expectation here. Is it a national championship in three to five years? Is it being consistently, is it being content if Penn State's still the number one team, still the dynasty? There the I, I think Penn State still is the standard. I yes. don't think that yes. Penn State I think I think Penn State's going to win a national championship next year and the year after. Yep. 2026 is when that's that's when the the things change because the the classes they have put together now for 2024 2025 I think those stay intact. 2024 I mean we know they're going to stay intact and this lineup I mean this Penn State's lineups could be even better with the generational types of I've talked about it on the show that on my show that they could be even better than what's been going on in 21, 22, 23. So if you like those teams, you're going to love the next couple of teams that are going to be there in Happy Valley. So that third year, and there is the transfer portal. And it's not like David Taylor has to fight for resources, right? NIL and everything. David Taylor isn't going to be competing against other extracurricular opponents outside of what's on the wrestling mat. So I think that's yeah. what he has going for them is that there's dedication. He, he, it, everybody's united. It's a united front, same way it is with Penn State wrestling. Oklahoma State's going to be the same way. But Penn State's going to be the standard for the next two, three years, and then that's when, okay, does the is the dynasty going to crumble a little bit? And it's hard to say that it is because there's such a gap. Cody, you saw the standings at NCAAs, how far everybody else was behind Penn State, yeah. the points record that was yeah. reset this past season, and I think it could be reset again in just a year's time by that same Penn State wrestling team. So ultimately, if Oklahoma State doesn't win a championship in five years, is that a cause for concern, or is there something else that David Taylor needs to do in order to say, yes, let's continue to, you know, let's continue to go the route that we're going? If we don't have a national championship in the next five years, in in my opinion, something went dramatically wrong so i agree with you completely next season nobody really has a chance it's it's penn state's game unless you guys find a way to trip and fall on your face repeatedly (laughs) right Right. the the previous the the next year probably much of the same Mm -hmm. i think what oklahoma state fans are looking for is there's no massive disillusionment right there's nobody out here saying this hire means we can win a national title next season no but what it does say is we expect to be number two very, very quickly. Maybe not next mm-hmm. year, but the following season, 2026, we should be the next team, and and, and there'll be a fairly clear distinction. There will be Penn State, Oklahoma State, then everybody else. Right now, it's Penn State, um, you know, a couple others, basically everybody else. There's not a clear, distinct, we're going to be number two all the time. Maybe sometimes Ohio State, maybe sometimes Iowa, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's not a clear distinction between – you know, one team, two teams, and everybody else. It's Penn State, and then everybody else is playing catch-up. Cody, this was a lot of fun. 
not only is this a historic move and good for the sport of collegiate wrestling because it does it's not exhausting over here when you're a Penn State, you know, when you're a Penn State Nittany Lions talk show, when you're a Penn State Nittany Lions fan. But for collegiate wrestling, this is great for the sport. Creates, like you said, there's animosity. There's uh, another another potential rival that could be between, you know, on the national level here, even though Penn State's in the Big Ten and Oklahoma State's in the Big 12. And who knows what's going to happen with college athletics in the future. But this was a historic show, a wrestling crossover <laughs> on the college channels here. Go check out Locked On Oklahoma State on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Same thing for Locked On Nittany Lions. Cody, I'm glad we could get to do this. Thanks so much for the time. And we'll see, you know, Penn State and Oklahoma State wrestle. Who's to say we can't do this again and preview that? But thank you so much. I love it, man. And I can't wait. Yeah, I think this is, uh, this is something brewing for the sport of wrestling that can do nothing but benefit everybody. Cody, this was a lot of fun. Not only is this a historic move and good for the sport of collegiate wrestling because it does it's not exhausting over here when you're a Penn State, you know, when you're a Penn State Nittany Lions talk show, when you're a Penn State Nittany Lions fan. But for collegiate wrestling, this is great for the sport. Creates like you said, there's animosity, there's uh, another another potential rival that could be between, you know, on the national level here, even though Penn State's in the Big 10 and Oklahoma State's in the Big 12 and who knows what's going to happen with college athletics in the future, but this was a historic show, a wrestling crossover <laughs> on the college channels here. Go check out Locked On Oklahoma State on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Same thing for Locked On Nittany Lions. Cody, I'm glad we could get to do this. Thanks so much for the time. A and we'll see, you know, Penn State and Oklahoma State wrestle. Who's to say we can't do this again and preview that, but thank you so much. I love it, man. I and I can't wait. Yeah, I think this is, uh, this is something brewing for the sport of wrestling that can do nothing but benefit everybody.